Hey yo, and welcome to Callum's Corner. Alright, my postman is a twat and I'm dealing with it. Now, I've had my fill of this. I've reached my own personal idea and I'm standing for no more of it. Right? If you force your conversation upon someone, you need to have a good look at yourself in the mirror. Right? And if they give you a clear verbal prompt that the conversation is over and they need to get on, like, okay, mate, I best get on or something like that. If someone says something like that to you, you just carry on jibby jabber jabber jabbering at them, right? You are a conversational rapist. You have no consent for this conversation and you are forcing it upon someone. And it needs to stop now, right? It is ridiculous. It has plagued me since I moved to this house and I'm not having it anymore, right? Every morning I wake up and it's the same thing, right? I come downstairs, make myself a frothy coffee, have a quick bio-evacuation, pop the sausages in the oven, just trying to ease my way into the day, right? Open up my my kitchen doors. I don't have a back garden. It's a front garden, right? So I open up the kitchen doors, let Lenny out for his pee and stuff. He likes to hang out in the garden in the morning. And then I start trying to eat my breakfast, right? And every day, without fail, it's the same thing. My gate opens, my postman comes in, he wedges himself in my open kitchen doors and he just dip, 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 jabs at me, right? With his stupid arm, like, splayed up on the door frame, like he's a cowboy or something. He's awful. He's always sweaty. I can smell his sweat. Like, it blows in through the open door. You can see that giraffe going past his armpit. I get it in my nose while I'm trying to eat my breakfast. I mean, it'd be okay if I was, like, a woman or a homosexual male. I might find it attractive, but I'm neither of those things. I'm just another middle-aged bloke trying to enjoy his breakfast with the, the smell of another middle-aged bloke sweating his nose. It's awful. And the conversation is worse, right? He will not listen. He will not stop talking at me. And uh, it started innocently enough. It was just him moaning about his family, his wife, his kids just constantly. And I just thought he was a miserable bastard. But then one day we made the mistake of going on to football and he just so argumentative. Like, we agreed about everything. Like, we were talking about Solskjaer and how he's probably not good enough to be Man United manager, right? We agreed that, uh, like, uh, we're talking about who could take over and be a good manager. And I say Pochettino, like, he'd be perfect. There's no release fee. He works well with kids and stuff. And like, he gives me this stupid little look and he goes, yeah, but you have forgotten something, haven't you? You've forgotten the Southampton manager. And he's a little smug, little smile at you. I haven't forgotten the Southampton manager. Obviously, Pochettino's ahead of him. Yeah, the Saints manager's done pretty well, but Pochettino's gone and done it at a, you know, bigger club, a big club. Well, Tottenham, not a big club, but he's done it in the Champions League. You know what I mean? Like, he's clearly got more experience. He would be further in line than a Southampton manager for the Man United job. He just says stuff to get a reaction. Like, after that, I stopped responding as much. Like, I just wouldn't ask him questions anymore, hoping that we could just get this over quicker, that I could get to having my breakfast quicker in the morning without having to deal with this, right? He goes on to the difference between Android and Apple phones, right? He's bombing on about Apple and how great they are. And I'm just casually disagreeing, saying, well, I, I, I like to record loads of stuff on my phone. Like, Android works better for me because I can put, like, memory cards in there and stuff. Like, I give him all these reasons it works better for me. And he, he just, at the end of it, he goes... Oh, you just haven't tried Apple then, have you? And then he walks off like, what the hell are you talking about? There's another opinion to yours, you massive twat, all right? Anyway, if it ended like that, if this was it, I could probably deal with it, all right? But it, it's been getting worse. Since I started asking him the questions, he's forced his conversation upon me more, right? He's now got to the point where he, he's saying these ridiculous statements just to try and get a reaction. The other day, he's talking about how his business failed and it was all his wife's fault. And he makes this statement that, Women are stupid and they cannot be trusted with money. They're not smart enough to deal with it, right? Uh, and then he does this little look at me afterwards, like, come on, do something about it. And I, I'm not going to bite at that. It's ridiculous. Like, I'm not going to bite at your stupid attempt to get me to converse. And plus, it's a ridiculous point. Like, every girlfriend I've had, I've ended up betting for everything. They're much better with their money than men are. Anyway, after that, I decided I'm just, I'm going to avoid the blog, right? Yesterday... Whole plan. I uh, waited till I saw him coming down my road, went into the bathroom, shot, locked the door, right? Heard him come through my front gate. He comes and shouts at the kitchen. I shout out clearly. I'm in the bathroom. Just leave it on the side, right? What does he do? Just leave the post on the side? No, he comes into my kitchen, walks in, tells me he's going to no rush and starts talking to me through the bathroom door. I'm fake pooping in there. You know, if I'd been real pooping, I would have been mortified. I don't want to talk to someone while... My waist is slipping out of my anus. That's massively inappropriate. I had to deal with it then. Like, he's just out there talking at me. And I knew 
if he knew I was fake pooping, he'd get a kick out of it. Like, he'd get some kind of perverse power kick over the fact that I'm trying to avoid him. So I'm thinking, how can I make this more realistic? I'm hoping to, you know, just squeeze out a fart just for the smell of it, for the realism and stuff. But I can't get one because I've already done all my morning business. In the end, I just have to hope that the fog of my earlier bio evacuations hung around enough to give it some kind of realism, go out and have this stupid conversation with it. Right? This morning... He has gone over the line. He is, I'm not dealing with him anymore. Right? This morning, I gave up on the bloody futile fake pooping. I just sat myself down in the kitchen ready for him. He comes in, starts telling me this story about this bloke he's seen this morning. This bloke who lives in my village who apparently has tried to commit suicide like several times. And well, that this year alone, he's done it loads of times in the past. Right? This bloke is getting dropped back off to his house by a taxi from the hospital because he's, he's made another attempt recently. I postman sees him and he's telling me that these jokes he's made about how they should have just left him at the hospital. It's not worth the money bringing him back because he's only going to be back in there the next day. And then he does this whole thing. Me, you are the worst bloke in the world. You are raping me with your conversation and the standard of your banter is mocking someone who wants to kill themselves. You are just a prick, mate. I've had it. I've had it now. There is, there is no telling people like this. I'm getting a lock from my front gate. And I'm getting a pox box that I put up out the front. I'm on my way to B&Q now. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. It's just ridiculous. And what's the rush anyway? Pox is just a load of bloody arse, isn't it? Bills and stuff. About nine years ago, I got a tax rebate that came through. And since then, it's just been continuous bills. So I'll get it at my own bloody leisure and cut him right out. Massive twat. If you've got anyone in your life who is like this, forcing their conversation upon you, cut them out. They're twats.